Hi, my name is Francine Dufour Jones, and I'm delighted to be here. Today's a really fun topic. It's like, don't throw away your goofs. How many of us have unfinished things hanging around that they kind of started off and then they go, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Um, you know, these are just a few that I had laying around. And I noticed a lot of my students throw these away. After a in-person class, I'll be cleaning up and I find in the trash all these little, I call them jewels of things that they didn't like or they didn't work. Well, the very nature of alcohol inks is it's elusive, it's changeable, it's fixable. And usually we're painted on painting on something like UPO or tiles or narrow paper or graphics. And almost all of these can take it, can be taken all the way back to white. So no matter where we are in our creation, it can be upgraded, changed, wiped out, started again. Plus, it can excite our imagination on ways to fix it. Often will bring us into new discoveries. Like we can put acrylic on top of alcohol inks. Acrylics can cover anything up. Uh, so there's just so many possibilities. So I'm going to go through a couple of them to give you some ideas. I'd love to hear your ideas too about what failed uh, or goofs. And I'm going to brainstorm some ways that these could be fixed. And I'll just kind of go through some of them. Uh, we don't have time for me to go through all of them and actually do them. And then I'll do a few examples of actually how that works. All right. So let's get going. First, let's start off with uh, kind of going over some of the many substrates that we might be using. One of the most common is UPO, and UPO comes in different weights, like this is a heavy one, and this is a, a huge one, a 9 by 12. And this paper is white. Now, with UPO, I think it's probably the most popular one that uh, alcohol ink users use besides tiles. And I like UPO a lot. I've used it for years. But every substrate we use has an advantage and a disadvantage. And knowing what those are, we can use those to uh, help enhance what we think might be goofs. And using the qualities of whatever substrate we're using can help us turn it into a better painting. So, for instance, UPO uh, has a staining quality. For most colors, you can get pretty well back to white if you're rubbing it off with alcohol or blending solution. But some colors in particular will stain, even though you can rub and rub and rub, but they, you don't quite get totally back to white. Now, some people might think that's a disadvantage. Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. I use it to my advantage. When I know that it's going to leave a stain, I'll use it maybe for a background like the, the sky where I want the very subtle glow. So I'll wipe it off knowing that it's going to be stained. Or maybe I'm painting snow. I'll put a lot of heavy color on and I'll wipe it off. But yet there's a light stain that is left there. So knowing that, that's going to help me in the future. Then there is Durabrite black and there's also Durabrite white which looks just like UPO and I don't use the black too much but uh, you have to use something like um, opaque white usually to put down first and then put color on top of it in order for the color to show up on the Durabrite black unless you're using something other than alcohol inks. So I do use do a, do a bright white. I don't have a, a pad of, of that to show you right now. But I think right now that's my favorite. Because that you can get all the way back to pure white. And then the other thing I like to use, and these are all by the company called Graphics. The Dura, Dura Brights, Duralar. Now Duralar is like a clear acetate. 
And I can use this for all sorts of wonderful things. If I want to paint or trace a design on, um, I skip the transfer paper, I skip the uh, light, the window, the scrubbing, and the transfer, and I put the, the acetate directly on the image I'm copying. And I can just paint on this and or the outline with, say, alcohol inks. And then the background is going to be clear. Then I take this image that I sketched out here and I put it on, say, a, another background like this. And I can choose different backgrounds and different patterns and pick the one I want. And it also, it, it just opens up so many possibilities and I'll show you a little bit about that one later. So those are some of the uh, substrates. And the other one, I didn't have a plain tile handy, but this is a tile. It, it's one I would call a goof because it's scratched, it's unfinished. Um, and this is going to be very easy to fix. The other thing that uh, you'll see, I quite often, actually, I, didn't say this, I quite often use a tile as my palette. And when I teach alcohol inks of mixing colors, you'll see that you can take the, our colors that we were playing to have an example of just mixing colors, and students go, okay, that's that. Well, we could take the paint from that, or we could add alcohol and, and let it drip and it can turn into, say, a forest. I'll show you a little uh, video clip of that later. And that's the most common way that I fix goofs is pouring alcohol on top and watch it just flow. And by that uh, flowing, it kind of suggest things that I can go. And if you're willing to be open to the possibilities, it's really magical. In fact, I want to show you an image of, I was just pouring things and this fairy showed up. No kidding. I don't know where she came from, but it was like, oh my gosh, there she is. I did a little highlighting around the, uh, her legs and, and wings a little bit and that's all. But if you just kind of let things go and go with the flow, magical things just happen to show up like that. Not gonna promise it, but they do a lot. Show you some of the things that need fixing right off the bat. These are some examples of things that most people would throw away. Now this, this isn't bad, it's just not finished. So I. I could save this, of course, by going back in and uh, staining this the tree here a little bit. Like I don't think I wanted that color or rough around the edges, but that'll be pretty easy to fix. <laughs> this is going to be a fun one. You go, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with that? Well. There's lots of possibilities. One thing I've been toying with the idea is I have, I've made some of my own stencils by cut, cutting out uh, figures and shapes and things. This happens to be a moose that I've cut out. And it's, I, I think I used uh, something like a, maybe a Yupo to even make this one. But later on, I think I, I started using thicker, like the, the Duralar to make stencils. But let me just give you an idea. So it's, you just start playing with what this moose looked like if he was a colorful moose. Now, any one of these, the one that kind of got my fancy was if I, I like, I like these colors against each other and they're, they're kind of wild and kind of my kind of colors. I thought that would make a really fun painting. So what this would be is I would outline the moose and then I'd make the background behind it all black. 
not, I'm sorry, not all black, but a darker thing. So the mousse would show up. I could also take a clear Duralar, put it on top of this, and just paint a background in the mousse so I could see exactly where it was. So that's one possibility. And then let's see what else I've got here in the pile. This background was a, what I would call a failed background. It looks like I was doing it underwater or thinking about underwater because I, I can see some little jellyfish here. And I'm not sure if I started off as underwater or maybe I was trying to do a landscape that didn't quite work out, looks like an aerial view. But I think this one, it, the colors are all light, of, light enough. I could just put more colors down, pour it around, and I could put in mermaids or other fish, um, turtles, uh, things like that. But So this one actually has a lot of possibilities. And this is a, quite a common one like this, that for the back, this is when I, I put my uh, UFO on glass when I paint, and I don't know what I was going for with this, but um, I stopped for some reason. I didn't like it. Well, I think this would be a perfect background for one of my favorite stencils is the dragonfly. And I'd probably pour some alcohol on this part to let it drip down some more. But I like all those sprinkles. I might sprinkle a few more alcohol uh, dots on it, maybe a few spritz of color. But then I think I'd like to use my uh, dragonfly stencil that I, I made and I cut up. I've done a, a video somewhere on one of the um, Alcohol Ink Society demonstrations on how to use <clears throat> this stencil. But how I would do this is I would take some acrylic ink and I would just dab the wings on. And so they would be opaque against the blue background. And voila. I'll show you a few examples of how I've done that on purpose. This is one uh, I considered a failed one too. It's pretty heavy. I think I, I used a snow cap on it, which makes it uh, kind of opaque. It, it actually adds a lot of thickness to it. Now, I could probably save this by pouring the sky a little bit more and defining the background. Or I could look and see what's on the back of it. And I go, wow, that's interesting too. That's the start of a great background. And I might not make this an underwater scene. I could pour, uh, put inks on the top here and flow it down and turn it into a forest. That's a possibility. Here's something that looks like I was experimenting with some gold. And gold, um, I don't know if it will be able to wipe it off so much. So I might have to add something like acrylics on it. But the other side uh, is another great example of this kind of cutout that would work on there. I have a lot of different colored cutouts, but this is the one I have handy. So that's another one, and I would just dab on with alcohol or um, some acrylics with a sponge, like a makeup sponge. So that's one possibility. Here's another. It seems like I have a lot of those. Oh no, this is this is a fun one. This looks like I started to pour and I go, what in the world was I thinking of? So just move these around in all different positions and what does it suggest to you? But to me, it's starting, it looks like it could be turning into a forest with some light back here. And this would be kind of some trees to drip. So how I would turn this into a forest, one of my favorite ways, 
is I would just put a line of alcohol at the top. I would have my handy drip pan, which is the top of a spinach or you know, some plastic, and I would let it drip into that. A lot of artists don't use that. They just use the paper towel. That'd be okay too. And just let it drip. And this could very easily turn into a forest. And the back sides are totally plain. So it's got that number two on it. Well, I could do something with that. And this looks like, uh, I'm not sure if I did that or a student did that. It might've been one that a student threw away and kind of looks like. Uh, this could... This could be saved. You could rub some of this off the side here. You could put in more trees, pull down more trucks, dab in some more on the ground like flowers and stuff. So this is totally savable. And, you know, I think someone, I'm, I'm pretty sure this wasn't me. I think they just gave up too soon on it. And on the back, <laughs> Now, this looks like me. I probably took the back and was playing with some bright colors like this. This has so many possibilities, especially with uh, florals. I could see a flower here. And there's so many ways this could be done. You could draw over some of these with, say, um, a dark pen or ink. There's a whole thing. I think Beth Pluth uh, teaches loose flowers that I really got into. And I'll show you some of them that uh, I'm just totally addicted to. But they could start off something like that. This was, I was experimenting with dropping drop colors, very similar to this. And then I got a, actually, I got a skewer dipped in liquid acrylic. And I just freehand what it suggested to me. I really like this technique. Here's some other ones. They're not finished, but the same, the same principle. These can all turn into very loose flowers like this. And that's an abstract. Let me show you some more of these. Here's another one like that that could easily turn into one of those. Here's one that was started and totally unfinished. I mean, I'm sure you can see things that you could paint from this, like loose. These could be a flower, could be an orchid, and I could add some leaves in it. Again, the same way. More abstracts like that. Here's one taken a little bit further, you can see. Just let your imagination go. And some of these might work, some of them might not. But you can always save it. Like, for instance, this one. I don't like the bottom of it. It needs more uh, stems coming in here. And if I wanted to cover, let's say, this dark color here, rather than rubbing it off, I could also paint on top of this with acrylics. And here's, a, here's another one that was just a bunch of color. And since it was dark, I went in with a white Poshka pen. Poshka pens are opaque. And I just kind of freehand some flowers or shapes that brought my uh, mind to it. Now, this is one I did. I think it's a little dark, but I could easily fix this by rubbing out you know, some color for highlights with a Q-tip. I could also put highlights in it and change the colors with acrylics on top of this. Here's another one. I just love these. Thanks, Beth. <laughs> and this is just um, one that I've just been experimenting with, testing out. I was testing out um, drawing, I believe I was drawing with a Ashka pen and then filling in. Um, so I could finish that. All of these are possibilities. Oh, yeah, here, here's, I got sidetracked on it, but that was, I could easily take this into some kind of loose flowers like that.
Now here's one, the back, uh, that, that would really kind of be like starting over, but it this could be used very easily. But this, I was just throwing down color and I'm not sure what I was gonna do with it. And then I thought, aha, I could make something like this. And, and what this is, I got it upside down. This was color like this. And then I took a white marker to outline my trees, my drawing. And then inside those, I put masking fluid. When the masking fluid was thoroughly dried, I scrubbed out, rubbed out the background around the trees. So they have they have uh, resist on them that's dried. And then I pulled out the background. So this is like reverse painting. And this would be a very good uh, piece to try that on. This one's not finished. Here's another one. I'm not sure if I started that or not, maybe. But it needs it needs like some tree trunks. It needs maybe the sky here fixed. And again, it needs some bottom uh, uh, flowers and stuff. And I like to use those little stampers. I don't have one with me, but it's a, a felt pen that you dot little dots on and you go dot, 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 dot. And it, it makes these little dots like that. And these are the makeup sponges I used with um, the stencils. And this one, this is not a alcohol ink painting. It looks like I was experimenting with some of my handmade stencils and I was using, I was using either watercolor or liquid acrylics. You go, well, what's that got to do with alcohol inks? Remember that Duralar uh, clear through that I told you about on this? I could paint something on this and then put it over this background. So I could I could build this painting up in, in layers. Um, I think that would be really fun. And it's deciding what I could want on that. I could put a raven on top of this. A black raven would show up. I could put uh, different uh, flowers. I could put animals, that moose would even go on here that I showed you. So again, this is many, many possibilities, especially with adding a layer of the clear plastic on top. So those are some to get started with. And I'm gonna take you through uh, a few of them with the time we have, just to give you a little bit more clear idea and exactly what we're talking about. And then it's like, let your imagination go. I have learned and had so much fun doing these because it, it's intuitive. They take me in areas that I never planned on going and, and I am delighted and surprised. New to alcohol inks and tiles. The next thing I'd like you to do is to get very loose and play with the inks and roll them around, go with the flow, and just see what it feels like to play. And th there's no goal in this other than to loosen up and have some fun. So I always use my drip pan. I think I told you in the supply video. This is just this, the top of a spinach. I eat a lot of spinach and greens. And I call this my drip pan, kind of like a drip pan uh, mechanic might use in a car. So I'm going to take some of the tiles that we were experimenting on color and I'm going to ask you not to get too attached to anything we do. The purpose of the, the first week is to loosen up. If you have any control issues, you're going to get rid of them. <laughs> you're just going to play. So now I could save this and pull the color off it to paint from but I have so much paint, we're not going to do that. Let's do this one. Of course, you know the other cool thing about alcohol inks. If you don't like something, you can totally wipe it off with a cotton ball and some alcohol on the tile, so they'll come perfectly clean. So I'm going to show you, this is just a piece. I might have been experimenting to mix colors or who knows what it was. And I'm just going to reconstitute 
the inks by pouring some alcohol on it. Many times I use this if if I'm making trees or something and, and I think it's totally messed up. I just pour alcohol on it and something else magically appears. And it might be a background for a seascape or ocean or landscape or trees. Anything that it might suggest to you is fair game. Also part of the fun is as you're moving the inks around like this, imagine what it might be, what it might suggest to you. It's kind of like watching clouds and saying, oh, that looks like an elephant or that looks like this. Because later on, you can take an abstract image like this and you can develop it even more, bring something out. Like I'll show you the painting once a little fairy appeared in my woods and I go, wow, where'd she come from? And she was just there. That happens a lot <laughs> if you're willing to go with the flow. Also, usually in the first class, that I, my students, I don't even let them have a brush. So I want them to stay very loose. Paint with Q-tips. Move the ink around. Try dipping it in alcohol. Pretend like you're a mad scientist. Or finger painting like a child. Now, I had not planned on doing this at all, but it kind of presented it itself to me. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to save it. I was just being loose and pouring colors around. I'm going to save it when it dries. When we get to the tree section, I'm going to put some trees in it. And this will be a really nice background for that. So... I tell people, so many times the students, they'll get something maybe like that, and they go, oh, that looks horrible. And I go, no, it's just the start of something. It's the start of play. So don't give up. Just keep working with it, because you can wipe it off if you don't like to. So your, your assignment right now is just to go with the flow. Pour ink around. You can make abstracts. You can think, oh, that looks like a landscape. But just... Move it around and see what happens.
Now see, this could turn into a forest. It could turn into a city. It could remain an abstract. So that's what I'm talking about. Just play with it. One of the things I love about alcohol inks is if you just go with the flow, it's like you have a partner painting with you. It's like the divas of the ink or something. So I'm going to let this dry too and decide later on what I'm going to make with that. But I'm loving it. So try not to be judgmental with what you're doing. Give yourself permission to just play. The other thing, if you have your alcohol blending solution and your alcohol, you might experiment just so you can get the feel of what, what the difference is. You'll discover that the blending solution is a lot slower moving and it dries a little bit slower. It's like smooth honey. And then the alcohol is a little bit faster. They both do very similar things. One costs a little bit more and one doesn't. So. For those of you who have taken June Rowland's class, you know she uses a straw to move the ink around her credit card. I live in Alaska, so a lot of times what represents Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights seems to show up in my work just because I'm fascinated by it. So these aren't long studies, it's just plain. Here, here's another one that I was just playing with. I think it was a demonstration in one of my classes. And I splattered alcohol and I just pulled a Q-tip down. And this may look like nothing, but it could turn into a wonderful forest. I mean, I can see the birch trees already coming out. And the other thing, even though you see something, you don't have to make it anything. It, it can be just colors that please you. It can be abstract. It can be a feeling. And there's no right or wrong to this. You can't mess up.
was puppy filled. I could still read the label. But remember, I still look at the top. Woohoo! That's pretty intense color. Just plain, my flower turned into a landscape or an abstract landscape. that was a flower. All right, I am well, almost going to stop. See this one little thing here I want to change. Okay, this is the landscape that used to be a flower. If you're willing to just go with the flow and play with it, if it looks like it's a big disaster, um, Either wipe it off or keep playing. 